much of the impact of climate change is a redistribution of the natural resources. So a redistribution of water and a redistribution of the plants and animals as the climate changes. Everything from tourism to uh, agriculture is even impacted. We are having more frequent extreme weather events and also more frequent uh, and more extensive drought events. In Selkirk, our number of hot days are going to go from 8 a year to plus 40 a year. Um, but what does that actually mean for service delivery in your municipality? How is that going to change what your day-to-day -day actions are in order to adapt to um, the changing climate? Our uh, preparedness gap between what we need to prepare for and what we are is growing as a result of what we're already experiencing. Looking at the uh, impact of uh, climate change basically through the asset management planning process as part of risk assessment. Asset management is the entry point. It requires some planning and some interrogation of, of what assets are at risk and why. And once you understand the why, you understand the system that creates those risks. And if you don't regard it as a, as a system, uh, then you're going to be getting less than optimal uh, solutions for sure. So it's uh, an integrated, holistic approach. Making sure that climate change is a component of asset management planning and service delivery planning is ensuring that um, you're ultimately making the investments in infrastructure today that will meet the demands of the future at the time that makes the most financial sense. I think every municipality across Canada needs to start thinking about asset management um, and what goes hand in hand with asset management is climate change. We're really looking to understand what does that future climate going to look like and how can we adjust what we're doing and how we fit within it, um, that system and really move forward. Before even beginning the process, uh, I, my recommendation would be to gather a team of people from across departments uh, throughout the organization um, who have different roles so they can provide the unique perspectives from their role and their day-to-day -day, uh, decisions that they're making. If you could look at the observed data and make some correlations between maybe events that have happened in your community, then you have that first step. It used to be that municipalities were maybe more reluctant to spend additional money to address something that was seen as extra for climate change. And now working that into your designs is really just the base level. Well, whether we're 10 or 30 years off, I don't know, but eventually we won't be talking about this because it'll be the norm. I, I really like the idea of speaking with your operations folks. What are the things that are keeping them up at night? What are the vulnerabilities within your systems or your service delivery. I would listen to your customers as well. What What is it that they're seeing within their own neighborhoods? One of the really important things to dealing with climate change is to get all the different opinions on the table, to have the climate scientists sit with the people with the boots on the ground because the people with the boots on the ground are really the ones who see the impacts and the consequences of the changing climate. There's a number of different ways of doing it but I think most I think one of the most interesting ways is to identify those services which your community cannot live without and, or are going to be really impacted if they're offline for any you know, number of hours or days. You have to be able to bring it together as a team and, uh, and everybody has input and uh, it has to be a consensus in the end. Mm -hmm.